We are so, back with a recap, not a nightcap, because it's a US thing. We are back with, we are getting it about with the ultimate guide on what to do when you get established or settling down in Marbella. Yes, we have helped actually hundreds of people from our business in Marbella, so we know a lot about it. Plus, we did it ourselves. And we actually did an ultimate guide before. I don't know how many pages, pages that was. 44 pages. 44 pages. Yeah. So we know a little bit of yeah. the deal. So to enjoy this amazing lifestyle, there are practical things that you have to take care of, right? Both practical jokes and practical things. Yeah. And uh, so to make it easy, we'll try to put that into one episode. And uh, our points that we will cover, starting out with NIE number. What is that? So it's like a person. Oh, you forgot something. I forgot something. And this is the... Something important. Very important. Episode seven. We are doing it. And why are we celebrating that? As some people think that is a little bit OTT over the top, but you know, I never like to conform in any ways. So I don't care what people think. If they think we should drink water, we drink champagne and vice versa. So today we drink bubbles. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Never conform. Never conform in anything. The day you conform, you you lost, basically. So... I think I will just take the control of this bottle. To and the lady you can continue first. talking about what is an NIE number. So, when you come to Marbella, there is Sounds a very set technical. of rules. NIE. NIE. I think that... Uh, I will put that bowl over to you because I cannot remember what NIE stands for, but I know what NIE number is. Yeah, it is, it is it's an identification number, similar to you know in Denmark we have we call it a personal number. In some countries they call it a tax number, yes. but in any case it's an ID yes. that you need as a foreigner if you want to buy real estate. I don't like the sound to... of it, but it's good to have. Yeah, an NIE number, and how do you get that? Before you explain that, cheers, cheers to the Marbella way. Cheers to the Marbella way. And today we're going to talk about something that is more practical. It's more serious, but it's part of the job. Pa practical that stuff have always been boring. When you arrive to right? this amazing location, yes. it is a country, it is a region. It does have municipalities and it does have an administration. So there are certain rules to to know. And yes. it's, not that, it's not that hard, actually. No, but it is important. Like this is absolute, absolutely must when you are traveling to Marbella, you have to have these kind of steps by steps of getting an NIE number, choosing a school if you have kids, and also housing. Where do you want to stay? Accommodation. You want to stay in a hotel, apartment, or you want to buy a house? Yeah, maybe you want to register a company, and maybe you want to do some research on the business opportunities. What kind of industries can we? Uh, say that we have in that area, not as many as in a big city, but there are still more and more different opportunities business-wise as well. And then, of course, there is the opportunity that you actually just keep running your business in your home country, and then you use Marbella as a satellite to enjoy the sun and recharge the batteries. A, a lot of people do that too. Beautiful resort. You don't necessarily have to have a company there, right? No. So let's just dig into what is the NIE number. So the uh, NIE number NIE. is uh, yeah. a number that you need to have a mobile subscription or buy a property. You or can't a do anything in Marbe without a NIE number. Let's just put that straight forward. Yeah. And so it's just um, a formality. You can get it at the police station, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you may stand in a queue for a while. A couple of but, hours. But uh, you may get to know some locals four, on five, the way, which is charming. Minutes. So if you want to go... That way, which is, I'm going to do it myself. I had many fun moments the, in that place. I'm going to do it myself approach. Uh, and the police, I have to say, the police men or police women there are so nice and friendly. You will see them everywhere in the bars, in the tapas corners. Yeah. And they are they, sweet. They're very, very nice. Yeah. They're very yeah. approachable. They like, have people's, three different police um, people's person. corps <laughs> oh, in Marbella. The Policia Local, the Policia Nacional, and the Guardia, Guardia Civil. Yes. Right, uh, so they're pretty covered, and they're doing a good job. Uh, 
they have a good relation to people. They're very friendly, and but they also are pretty proud of their job. So they like oh, what they're doing. It's good. So when they give you that stamp, they they feel that it's and it's literally a stamp, something like back then, stamp yeah. like this under papers, and you have an E number. So you can either apply for that in you, in the Spanish um, local consulate, embassy? yeah, consulate in the country you come from, or you can apply at the local police station when you arrive. And you can even do it online. You can Google like how to get an NIE number in Spain and you can hire people to do it and it's quite easy. It will take a couple of weeks. But you have to complete something called an EX15 form. So it sounds very technical, but every single administrative document in Spain has like a totally number. So let me just give you a little the viewers. Could you just tip. say it again? What What is the call? EX15 form. EX15 yeah. form. Yeah, EX for extranjero, which means foreigner. Oh, yeah. But. yeah, so uh, of course, uh, it is worth mentioning that if you have a lawyer, and there are many good ones that can help you, and it's actually quite affordable, quite inexpensive, yeah. then you're going to save yourself a lot of time. You don't have to stand in the queue at the police office and so on. They do I everything was, for I you. I think we should point that out. At a very if reasonable you fee. have plan on going to Marbella and settle down, hire a lawyer in the beginning because it's so much easier and it's it will make everything easier. Yes. Uh, you won't be able to ask the lawyer what schools to choose. Mm -hmm. There are things you do have to, yeah. you have to go out and experience and make your checks and so on. We'll talk about that a bit later. But when it comes to things like NIE number, if you buy, for example, a property, we'll talk about that as well. Then uh, the normal thing that you do is that you ask your lawyer to get it and he'll just literally set up your bank account, he'll help you. He, he will hold you in the hand. It's like, oh, let's meet at that cafeteria at 8 o'clock or yeah. 10 o'clock. And he will, will sit and have a coffee and a breakfast together with the lawyer. And you just go yeah. like and, hand in uh, hand. To be uh, formal, uh, what happens is in Spain, what you do is you give a power of attorney to the lawyer. So even if you're not in the country and you bought a property, the lawyer can take decisions on your behalf. I mean, you will direct the right. lawyer, but formally speaking, the lawyer can actually uh, sign for you and do things locally for you. So it's very, very helpful. And it's a normal, it's a standard procedure. So it's, it's, you need a, I would recommend a local lawyer. Yes. If you don't want to do that, you can go to the Spanish consulate in your home country, yes. get your NIE, or you can go to the police station. Mm -hmm. So that was the NIE. You can number. do it by yourself, but always good idea to get a lawyer. Yeah. And because uh, if, if you don't you... speak Spanish as well, it can be challenging because it's not everywhere they speak English. And if you example. choose the low budget way that you're going to do it yourself mm -hmm. and learn on the way, some people prefer that, it's only 80 euros to get the NIE number. But let's say you hired a lawyer, you, you wouldn't pay more than a couple of hundred euros. Mm. So it's not a huge difference. difference. But it will, make, uh, but it saves it will you. make a huge difference. It, it will yeah. make a huge difference. So we would recommend that. Any so that number, was point hire number. a lawyer, and do it yourself or contact your local consulate. Yeah, so that was point one. Point two is schools. So schools. If you know, have kids, yeah. there's a lot a lot of opportunities in Marbella yeah. for private schools or public schools. Yeah. It's either or. And if you have, and where do you start? We talk about still this golden triangle, Benavis, Estepona, yeah. and Marbella. Yeah. And which schools? So if we start in Marbella, we have Swans, yes. a 40-year-old uh, private school. Mm -hmm. Pretty good reputation, right? Yeah, very good school. You have a pretty school in Marbella, which we know very well. Mm -hmm. uh, they moved to bigger facilities recently. Yes. Impressive facilities. Big school mm -hmm. now. They have schools all over the world. Yeah. Moscow. Uh, all New kinds York, of I think even New, New York, York, Asia, Thailand, yeah, Malaysia, Singapore. and so on. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, also a good choice in Marbella. Uh, so what else do we have? If we move out a bit east, we have, Virginia, we have a German school. They have right? a German school. Yeah, I'm just well. going east now. German school. Mm -hmm. So even if your children are not German, or you might want to have kids I know your kids people who there. don't even speak German as parents yeah. who have the kids. We in know the we have school. Spanish friends. Yeah. They put their Spanish children like, in the German school. Pauses, like, okay. because, because the advantage, of course, is, is very easy to understand. So obviously, as a Spanish child, you will learn to speak Spanish. Yeah. Then at the German school, you obviously will learn to speak English too. And then you have German. So you will have three languages. So that's a big advantage of choosing a German school or a French school, because you will have the Spanish and the English at the same time. So you will have three languages or your kids will have three languages. 
So that was a little bit about that side. Then if we move over to San Pedro, we have Laude, right? Yes, Laude. Laude, which is uh, really, it's between the uh, old town in San Pedro and the beach side. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty big international Great school. location, good facilities, yeah. nothing to say about big that. School. Other choice, yeah. San and Jose? San Jose, which is in Guadalmina. So it's Guadalmina a little Baja. bit further west. We talked Guadalmina about that Baja. before. Yeah. Very traditional Spanish mm. school, very high level. Good sports Still, facilities. Yeah. Very serious school. Very, let's say, conservative, yeah. high level. Yeah. Um, in, but in it is a Spanish, Spanish tradition. It's a Spanish speaking school. Yeah. We have it, to it's, mention it's, that. Uh, it's the uh, old school way. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. It's the, uh, yeah the refined Spanish audience mm -hmm. uh, that, that enjoys that school. Then we have the more affordable choices like Colegio Atalaya, yes. which is actually a top 10 schools in Spain. On the way to Benavis Pueblo, yeah. on, the, on the left side, yeah, close big, to Mecca. Big Macadona. facilities also for acting, music. Yeah, yeah. beautiful new facilities yes. and um, at a more affordable price mm -hmm. than the other schools we've mentioned so yeah. far. And then we also have an American school, Atlas, which is fairly new, yeah. only a couple of years ago but, they opened. But it's going very well. Yeah. It's totally team. oversubscribed, mm -hmm. 600 students, I think, already. It's in between yeah, it's Estepona and Marbella right? in an area called Selvo. Yeah. In Selvo, they have the biggest um, animal park. Yeah. It's like being in Africa. Yeah. So it's just next to that. Uh, no caged animals, if you say nice that. Nice school yeah. with, with, uh, with, uh, with views to the ocean. Uh, so that is definitely some of the important schools we've already mentioned. But so, we will put all of the schools in, yeah. in the links we have here. But in so other words, there are, check uh, it out. we did mention Aloha, you mentioned it briefly, in uh, Nueva Andalusia. This is one of the main areas in Nueva Andalusia. There's an international school called Aloha, which is also very popular, right? Uh, so there are definitely good choices of schools. They also have a good sound sort of Aloha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. So uh, Not that, we had that was a bit about the different schools. You can, uh, in all cases, apply online and get in contact and find out the um, procedures to get enrolled, right? That was a bit about schools. And was then, it about schools? Yeah. A lot yeah. of different schools, a lot of different options. Yes. Then we should uh, talk a bit about, and of course, a lot of people who arrive to the place, they prefer to have a school close to where they buy or rent their house. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about whether you buy or rent. So of course, not of course, but luckily, uh, it's a very healthy real estate market. And why is it so? Uh, again, 140 nationalities, it's a crisis resistant compared to other location market because the sun will always be popular. People will always come and right. enjoy the sun. It means that even though you might not even use your house or apartment, you can always rent it out at a very high price. Oh. So a lot of people buy houses, apartments just to rent out. You can definitely a find a very, very good apartment that with, the, with the look you love. People in Marbella are a lot into design and architecture. So if you find, there's a lot of good options. And of course you have more. the traditional Spanish style and then you have the more modern style. Mm. That's briefly what the coast can offer in terms of real estate, right? So uh, if you rent... And it will be quite easy to find something. It's not difficult. There's so much built, there's so much on the market. And of course, uh, a very good, the best, although you can get a lot of information on the internet, it is a very good idea to find a, a real estate agent, a professional one that can help you in this process, right? If you talk about renting short term, I definitely recommend the global search engines, Airbnb and Booking.com, because mm. everything is totally well organized and they protect you with their corporate policies. So if anything goes wrong, you always know they'll either refund your money or they will contact the owner. They'll mediate. Mm. So that's a, that's a big safety net. If yeah. you arrive, you can always Definitely. do that for a couple of months and then you can you can rent something long term. Long term is about it a year. It will be more like trickier if you find a real estate agent because a lot there's a lot of people out there and a lot of people just want to sell and don't listen to your needs. So it's very important you find someone who is understand your your needs yeah. it's very important that uh, you deal with people who are i just remember uh, one time we were looking at a villa and it was like a very s word bad basement and this guy was trying to oversell it's like yeah and you can do big bursts here and like come on i'm gonna see it's like so bad it's like we need a war zone and you yeah. talking it up it's like i don't want to live in a basement it's one, it's one of the most competitive real estate markets in the world and of course there are a lot of people who are eager to sell so you do have to be a bit careful who you deal with and um, find somebody who uh, who are in it for the long term and who are very transparent yeah with it as well and who are in it for the long term 
because um, in many cases, people who want to buy real estate, they don't do it in a week. Some do, and you but can very easily be carried do. away in Marbella because there's so many nice properties, you a should, lot of nice apartments. So just want, don't do a quick fix on real estate. You, you should take your time to really uh, look through the areas and look through the quality and and find something that uh, that you will be happy with long term, right? Whether it's rent yeah. or um, buy. But I will say, if we talk about rental properties, it's important to be on site, to be in the city, because it goes very fast. Uh, in that market. So it's very important that you can actually go out, okay, I'm going to come tomorrow at three o'clock and have yes. a look at this. Right. You can't do it online. Uh, it's it's important that you, you're actually present. So that was a bit on uh, renting or buying, right? And uh, a long-term rental contract, we should add, is normally about a year, mm -hmm. but it can then be renewed after a year. Deposit, you shouldn't pay more than one or two or three months. Some but owners. I think because there's a lot of people coming to the market, it definitely changed within the last couple of years. So people are paying up to six to 12 months deposit right now. Yeah, or upfront yeah, payments. Yeah. Uh, so for some of the nicer properties, the, the owner will you just You cannot get away with one or two months deposit. That's just, just literally to check the um, ability of yes. the uh, person, who the tenant, uh, they, they, they will ask you for six or 12 months up front. Hmm. And uh, a lot of people will pay that. And, and the right property they'll pay. Just to add something to that, it's very important who you're transferring the money to as well. So if the best case to transfer the money, if you transfer the deposit, transfer to the, the agent or transfer to the lawyer. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. Uh, recommend the lawyer. Yeah. In case you know the uh, your real estate agent very well. Yeah. You may trust your real estate agent, but otherwise trust your lawyer. Yeah. And he has a client account and yeah. the lawyer should be responsible for looking through the rental conditions. It's money well spent. So uh, just keep everything in order. And uh, literally, if you keep everything in order, everything will be fine. I, I know for a fact that, uh, that you won't have any difficulties as long as you're thorough and you do things caution, with, with caution, mm -hmm. not just Oh, let's see what happens, you know. So that was a bit about uh, renting or buying when you arrive to Marbella, right? And then let's uh, talk about registering a company. But I think it's also important to, to understand that if you are looking for buying a property and you are not a EU resident, you have something called a golden visa. So you spend $500,000 plus and then you can actually have, you know, a residence in, in Spain. And then you're allowed to travel in and out and there was no limit to yep. how long time you you can stay there that's right and that's something you again you can do from spain or you can do from the um, the consulate in your home country apply for a golden visa so it's a great option that um you can actually be yeah you can you can have an entry to eu through spain mm. uh, by investing a minimum of five hundred thousand euros it's called a golden visa and um and yeah, it gives you more flexibility so you can actually stay if you're from the US or any mm. other place overseas. You, you now have two different Second home. homes yes, that's, uh, that's and you can stay depending on, on, on your situation work-wise and family-wise. You can use those places. Mm. Yeah, so that, that's a great option. So um, if, in case you want to register a company, uh, you want to run your own business, of course, first of all, you should check the business opportunities in, in that market. You may have an online business and you know how everything works, so you might not even need a Spanish company. But if you need to register a local company because you decide to, let's say, go into, could be real estate, starting a restaurant, um, what else can you do? Of course, if you're a specialist, you can be a dentist or you can do any of these expert, uh, you can do any of these expert jobs, right? But um, yeah, so... Um, but double check whatever you do when you're setting up a business. And it's very, very good as well to have a lawyer in your hand or next to you because there's a different process. You need to have a notary. There's a different kind of procedure to get you from A to next level. And uh, yeah, and and one thing that a lot of people do is they become uh, what what is called autonomous, which means that you're, uh, you have your own... Are you self-employed? You're self-employed, yeah. yeah. And, that, and you pay a fee every month. Uh, around 200, 300 euro. Yeah, for being self-employed. And then you can write an invoice if you're a photographer or 
or you have any any skill that you can offer uh, in the marketplace, yeah. then you can you you're able to write an invoice, but you don't actually have to incorporate mm. a whole company. If you incorporate a company, uh, it will take in total about a couple of weeks. The lawyer will help you registering the name, and it will cost a couple of thousand euros, uh, approximately, and you're up and running with a Spanish SL. So that is in case you feel that it's important for you to have a local business, that that's uh, another way. It's a quite of an ultimate guide. Sorry? It's a quite of a good ultimate guide. Because I... when you're coming there for the first time and you want to set up something, where do you start? Yeah. yeah. So we have been talking about the near number, you want accommodation, talking about schools, if you have kids, yeah. areas, and also how to establish a company. And if there is anything that we've, of course, networking is always good. So you can join all kinds of like groups expats, on the net, a lot of expat expat groups societies on the internet, uh, and meeting. also um, physically, you can be part of those. And events. I think even the town hall is not even what I think, but I, I know that the town hall also provide you with uh, language courses so you can learn Spanish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, talking about that, it does help to to be able to speak Learn Spanish. Spanish if you have the intention of being in Spain. Yeah, if, if you long term want to be in Spain and especially if you want to run your own business in Spain, mm -hmm. it's really a big advantage. And it's so much, you know, it's so easier if you want to swear a bit like Spanish is more it's like <laughs> sounds more exotic. <laughs> and you will sometimes experience that when you practice your Spanish, some people from there uh, will reply back in English because they want to uh, practice their English. Mm -hmm. But it's still it's still great to speak Spanish, and especially yes. if you have a business there, it will help you a lot. So take a Spanish course either at the, at the town hall, town hall, town house, town hall, or online. There are, there are many many different language uh, courses you can take locally as well. Town house. So yeah, we even had uh, a Spanish teacher. We met. Uh, you remember we met at a cafe in Nueva Andalusia, and uh, and he was um, Sergio. When when we came, he yeah. only spoke Spanish to us. Yeah. And right? he's so friendly, like really friendly. You were not allowed like, to speak English for an hour. No. It was just, <laughs> just an, it was, it was hard when because one thing is to learn to say um, Hola. un espresso por favor, um, the simple things. Mm -hmm. But when you want to build sentences, it's it's a, it can be a challenging language with the verbs. It's definitely opposite what the grammar we have, where we're coming from. So I think the grammar can be quite challenging. So go and take a language course. Yes, yes. And then when we talk about uh, arriving to Mabea and getting established there, there is actually a point we should mention here too, which is that Spain is literally one of the best countries in the world in terms of private insurances. Oh, and, yes. so and this area that, that we're before. talking about, it's full of private hospitals. So you can get, um, for example, with Generali or other uh, local insurance companies, you can get a really good insurance. Insurance are great in Spain. And compared to private hospitals, American great. insurances, it's like a fraction of the price. Yes. And, and there's no hidden cost. You, many, pay, you many, pay once and that's... You pay you... one amount. It's not like, oh, then now you're going to use this facility, you're going to have this treatment. Mm. Then it's, you, we're going to invoice you this amount. Yeah. And then this goes to you personally. And this is paid by the insurance. It's like a, 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 a maze. It's it's hard to figure like out. Like an all-inclusive buffet. This is not... Yeah, this is just all-inclusive. Five-star all-inclusive all buffet. So you can, you can go to any hospital that is included, which is normally most of the hospitals yeah. in the area. Yeah, uh, for any, for any, and especially if you have small kids, it's a, it's a very good uh, safety, and it's it, it feels comfortable mm. to have that help, yeah. if there is anything, right? Mm -hmm. So, that is another element. Yes. What else do you think you should uh, be aware of? Uh, we could talk about uh, things like uh, renting a car, uh, because a car. the yeah. infrastructure there, uh, you could say, it's not like Copenhagen. No. Where in Copenhagen or London or New York, you can get. Anywhere you don't using really the, uh, take the bus subway, there. right? Yeah. Subway yeah. In, right. In, in Copenhagen is called metro, but same thing. We don't have that. We don't have. Marbella. We don't have train stations in Marbella. There is a. a we have a, bus station. We don't have train station. We don't have metro. There, there is a, a bus connecting Malaga Airport with yeah. Marbella. Yeah. Uh, my mom actually took that a few times. <laughs> we normally picked her up, but sometimes she actually liked yeah. to take the bus. And enjoyed the the ride. Like the goodbyes, it's like just 
put me off with the bus and then you, I like... You, you can do that, but that's more or less it in terms of public transport. Yeah. You do have local buses as well, but sometimes you wait a long time. It's not the perfect option if you want to travel in Marbella and around Marbella. It's better to have a car and it doesn't have to be that expensive. One example of a, a great uh, place to rent a car is Marbesol. Marbesol. We've been clients there for about for many years, mm. let's put it that way, <laughs> and recommended friends and family. It's The reason is, let me point this out, because they deserve... So no uh, surprises, all is, everything is included. The insurance covers everything. So you don't have to worry about if there was a scratch in the car when you, when you got it, mm. or if, God forbid, there was a scratch in the car when you handed back the car. Yeah, like it wasn't you, there when you someone got Someone is driving into you, they, you have an accident. Because everything is covered. It's just... And it's just a really nice feeling. Headache. And the price for the car is the same or less than the competitors. Yeah. So it just is, if you look at the matrix of things you want to have from a car brand or company, it is better than it the competitors. Is. They have a very it, good it, fleet. It, it takes more care of you. Yeah. And what, what happens is, it's, it's another th practical thing that we, we take sometimes for granted that people know. But if you haven't been in Marbella, uh, and you rent a car uh, on beforehand, what you do when you, you, you give them the number of your flight, you come into Malaga. Right, this is very important. And uh, you Raise call, actually. when you land, they know that you've already landed because they know the number of the flight. And their bus is taking you, it's only uh, five minutes. They will, they will pick you up the in company. the airport. They pick you up in the airport. Yeah. You they just will know exactly your name them. and they will pick you up. The, you just go to the place, which is just right across uh, when you come out of the only exit in the airport. You just go straight ahead can't and you're there. It. Can't, you can't miss, it. miss it. You just go straight ahead and you're there. Right? We've, we've been looking in many airports. Uh, last time, I think it was New York, where we were on another level uh, and an Uber driver, and then we had to communicate and it was complicated. Yeah. But this is very simple. You just go straight ahead from the exit and there you have the pickup area. And all the rental companies will pick you up there. Marbesol, for example, will take you to their rental company and you'll get the car. And, uh, it, and we never had the same... any problems with Marbisol. No, never. And uh, they have a, a, a little uh, department in Marbella as well. So they have a little office there. Yeah. So you can pick up or drop off your car there as well. You don't have to go to Malaga. It's 50 minutes from Marbella. So and that they is are very easy advantage. going. If you call and say, hey, I want to extend one more week. Yeah. They're very easy going with that. Yes. For a couple of days. Yeah. It's like, okay, just pass by. Or we just extend it and everything is done online. Great, great company. Five, five stars. Yeah. And, uh, and, and they have everything if you just want to have like a little Fiat 500 to like a Mini Cooper to X5 or you want a Range Rover, they have everything all convertible. Yeah, as yeah. Well. you can have, yeah. um, as you said, Fiat 500 for a couple of hundred euros a month. Yeah. You know, it's, it's um, off season. It's a bit more expensive on season. Mm -hmm. um, so, but very good options in general yeah. in, in, in car oh, rental. Right. But right. this is one of the best, if not the best one. Mm -hmm. So that's a good little tip. If not the best one. Yeah. Yes. So uh, what else should we remember when we talk about arriving to Marbella? And again, we take for granted that people know everything, but you know how it is when you arrive, when we arrive to a place that, where we haven't been before. There are many places, things that you don't know, and it takes a while to figure out. Yeah. So let us say... Cheers. And oh, it's getting a little dry. I'm sure it's there's dry another stuff. practical <laughs> to talk about. thing that we should mention. I will tell, just I got this idea from the sound of the glasses, that <laughs> this is just a, a very, actually small thing, but to me it's a big thing, that part of the uh, pleasure of being in the area around Marbella is the breaks you have during the day that there are so many places car? where you can sit and have whatever you want a water or an espresso or whatever you, and it's just those natural pauses those, nat na those natural breaks that makes you feel that you're actually living through your day you're not isolated in an office all day you you have those little breathing spots and you have it you have them between even between Malaga Airport and Marbella, and of course in and around Marbella. And it's just part of the lifestyle. It's not really a practical, formal, legal matter, but it's just making life easier. 
But also another important thing is that if you don't want to have an office and sit alone, you can have, that's a lot of great co-working spaces there. That was a good point. Yeah. yeah. And more I and think more. there is more and more opening more and more. up. Yeah. There's one on the main uh, beach road called Ricardo Soriano, it's like uh, the Golden Oasis. Mile. Yeah. There's a big co-working spot there. And uh, it, of course you have the traditional re Regus, I think it's everywhere. Regus, Regus. <laughs> I think it, it, it does yeah. exist, yeah, but it's it is not, not one of the no, better ones. No, absolutely not. It's very outdated, it's, it's to say there. the least. It's there. It, it's there, but it's not on the recommendation no. list, I think. No. I haven't... I'm sorry. No. It's not. But it, I can only say that because I know very amazing places. And is that a waste? Is that I a remember place? we had a meeting uh, not that long time ago on the in the co-working area on, on Golden yeah, Mile. And I just remember we there. sat in a meeting room and uh, we had all the presentation material, big screen. And the guy who runs the place, he came all the time with coffee and mm -hmm. he was just really taking care of us. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put the yeah. link yeah, we'll put uh, that or link. The, mention the place. And there's also one in the little courting list, which is in the middle of Marbella. That's like a pool, a co-working pool it's called. In the supermarket, yeah, upstairs. That's right. Was a restaurant right. before. And also in the uh, El Corte Inglés in Puerto Banús. It was right? on the top floor, right? The top floor is a corporate co-working space as well. No, this is not Puerto Banús. It's in Marbella. Yeah, but yeah. in Puerto Banús as well, right? Okay. No, no. Okay. Only so in, in Marbella. Okay, only in yeah. Marbella. Okay. That so, that's where it is then. Yes. Yeah, we we will mention that as well. So co-working so that was co-working. Absolutely, also a place to and look up. And now that we talk co-working, it is worth mentioning that a lot of people now all respect for co-working and <laughs> it's the right thing for for some people, right? But you don't even have to do it. I mean, it will give you an extra le level because you have a meeting, uh, you have a place to meet, you have professional equipment and people around you and maybe you like the vibe of yeah, and also being get around to know other people, people getting if you to are know. newcomers there you Absolutely. don't know anyone so but i'm just saying some it. people quite a lot of people like not to be uh, like to be independent yes. so they will just every single day maybe you know have let's say five to ten favorite spots you know then you have one day you are in the, in the beach your favorite beach restaurant mm -hmm. and uh, you work from there for a few hours go for a walk go to another place or back you know so that you, you can circle around and that that's part of the, the charm as well Absolutely. that you can keep in movement because some people including myself don't like to stand still so I like to move around and I get inspired when I move around from A to B I, I just get you know I just really like that space in between um, and, and a lot of people do that and there are amazing places that will allow you to stay anytime you obviously you buy a uh, juice or a coffee or a lunch or whatever you do, breakfast. But then there are hundreds of places where you can actually work from. Indeed it is. So is there any more we have to additional information or to add-ons? I think we've been uh, very, I think we've been quite uh, serious. We've been around it's the been block. A very, uh, it's been a very practical and serious, uh, let's say, ultimate guide. So is create. this like the place to go and to know if you want to step into the world of Mabea for the first time? Yeah. The ultimate guide? Yes. Settling down or just start your journey in Moria. Yeah, exactly. So, cheers to the Marbella way. And today we explained some of the legal aspects and the more practical aspects of the Marbella way. And that, you know, to be serious, we have to take care of that as well. So, a lot, a lot of more stuff to talk about next time, but stay tuned because we are up with more Marbella Way, the Marbella Way. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, a lot of stuff to talk about today, the ultimate guide, but stay tuned because we are ready very soon, even in a minute, with more the Marbella Way stuff. Absolutely, we've only just started. Thank you for watching and listening.